Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition Gaming. Today I'm going to show you my monthly haul for July of 2017. Of course I'm talking about the final 6 Amiibo that finishes out the Smash Brothers line. After a couple of years, the line is finally complete. I can now rest assured that I have them all, except for the silly little Rob Japanese version color. Well, that is until they re start releasing variants of the Koopaling or Bowser Jr. and release all the little Koopalings. So, well. until then, the line is complete and I'm happy. Now, back to the trades. So, starting off with some DC Rebirth hardcovers. And, unlike the Suicide Squad Justice League hardcover, these are actually oversized, so I'm really happy about that. And I haven't had a chance to read all the Flash, so I'm going to continue reading that. I did read all of Action Comics. They all have their own dust jacket, come with some art on the inside of the book. So, looks good. Not much as far as extras other than the variant covers, but that's okay. Honestly, for the price, this is a good deal. I can't wait to collect the rest of these, like Wonder Woman and Batman. So, I'm excited about these. Action Comics, this is one of my favorite runs so far in Rebirth. It is a fun, fun book. Dan Jurgens, a lot of throwbacks to 90s style of storytelling. Uh, now, you may be wondering why I have a craptacular book here. Uh, it's because I'm an idiot. I love buying books because of the art. So Tony Daniels really sold me on this. Because Brian Hitch's writing is just so, so subpar. Not since Chuck Austin's Pain of the Gods have I dread at reading Justice League, but Tony Daniels art does make up for it. So luckily Brian Hitch is off the book soon. So I guess we'll see what that team brings. But yeah. Um not only a completist, but you throw an idiot into that mix and I buy books that I probably shouldn't. I took advantage of things from another world's Nick and Dent sale. They were about 60 70 percent off and this book was 70% off. This is one that I was missing. This is Zenith Phase 4. It's the last volume from Grant Morrison's story, so I can't wait to finish it, but it's the first time this has happened that it's come in a condition that, eh, that is pretty nick and dent. Usually these, you know, just have a couple scratch marks on the back, nothing too serious, but that's, that's probably the worst one that I've, I still recommend buying from them, and I still recommend a lot of in-stock trades damage sales, so. Next up is some good old Uncle Scrooge goodness from Carl Barks. The good duck artist. So I believe this is the earliest Uncle Scrooge book from the Carl Barks stories. Um, this is this will be volume three, I think. They don't really have them numbered on the spine or on the back or anything. But what they started doing is in here, they started giving you a set of num volume numbers. And this falls as number three. So this will be the earliest one of his work. So it'll be interesting to go and read these because I've never read these stories. So looking forward to this book a lot. If you haven't checked out any duck books, you should. Because you're doing yourself a disservice if you haven't. Speaking of talking animals, just as good, if not probably a little bit better, is Stan Sakai's wonderful Usagi Yojimbo. This is the Usagi Yojimbo Saga Legends hardcover. Now I started getting the hardcovers with volume one, so I have to continue this tradition because they're wonderful and they all the hardcover limited editions they also come in soft cover by the way come with a number of the copies and i believe the first one they made a huge mistake because the first one only had 500 copies or 750 whatever it was it wasn't enough so it's one of those really really hard to find whales out there if you can find one in the wild as far as the hardcover to soft cover is a little bit easier to find but yes really looking forward to these these are the mini series and short stories that are finally collected I hope they continue this tradition with volume 8 when it comes out, hopefully sometime next year. Now for some trade paperbacks from InStock Trades. I got Batman New Gotham. This is a new printing. There was an earlier printing that had a volume 1 and volume 2, and they're going to continue these. These are This is Greg Ruckus' run right after No Man's Land, where Batman kind of gets a little makeover as far as the way that the stories are told. But these are solid. These are great. I've read these before, so I can't wait to reread them again. Speaking of great stories, the epic... And this is an epic storyline. The epic collection finally gets Amazing Spider-Man, Craven's Last Hunt. 
I didn't really know what was going to come in here because I, I just get the some of the epics based on what characters, but this one includes Wolverine and Spider-Man, or I'm sorry, Spider-Man versus Wolverine, which is one of my favorite stories when I was a kid. I love this story. It's probably one that it's talked about for years where Wolverine tricks Spider-Man into killing somebody and Spider-Man for years had a flashback about that but it's good it's it's a great story a lot of web of Spider-Man and some uh, and a lot of amazing now what's weird is are we ever going to get a web of Spider-Man or spectacular Spider-Man epics I don't know but this volume contains Amazing Spider-Man 389 to 294 plus the wedding the annual 21 annual 20 this is what drives me a little nuts Amazing Spider-Man 289 and 294, because volume, the Tom McFarlane omnibus starts with 297 or 298, I believe, leaving a small gap of about three issues that are just out there, which means that we're probably going to have to buy another epic that will also overlap the omnibus that I already own, the Tom McFarlane omnibus that I already own. That kind of aggravates me a little bit, because when the epics were announced, I'll keep going while I'm talking these were supposed to kind of coincide with the existing omnibus. So if you had bought Captain America Omnibus Volume 1, you could have just stepped in and bought Volume 3 like this one here. But that Spider-Man issue makes me think that it wasn't mapped out correctly. So yeah, this is some old Spider uh, Captain America Volume... Uh, this is Captain America Volume 3. So it's kind of the return of Bucky. I haven't read these much of these. I've read some of the Falcon storylines. I love rebuying crap. Especially when I already owned it. Yeah. But it's got pretty paper. And it's got a semi-decent spine. I already own this in trade paperback. I already owned it in single issues. Why did I buy this again? Because I'm an idiot. And I like my spines to line up. Even though they don't sometimes. But this collects the Greg Land and Chuck Dixon run on Nightwing. This is Greg Land, I think, at some of his best. This is before, this is in between his Jim Lee kind of ripoff style and his Lightbox style that he's known for, well, now known for porn faces. You could tell some of it is, of course, Lightbox, but it works for this. This is before he went over to Sojourn on um, during the cross-gen days. So I, I really enjoyed his art during this, uh, during his run on Nightwing. Now, let's take a break from some comics to talk about a toy that I bought. This is Dragon Ball Z. I saw this while I was up in Canada. By the way, I don't have any of my Canadian haul here because I already did a Canada haul. So, if you want to check out that video, it was posted on July 27th, I believe. But anyway, this is Super Saiyan 3 Goku. And that is just such a badass figure. Now, this one, I have to brag and kind of be a little embarrassed that I bought. This is Spider-Man Clone Saga Volume 1. If you remember my tour of my books, I said I would never buy this book ever, ever, because the stories, well, other than the beginning, actually, the beginning started off pretty good. But the stories just kind of got really crappy as the story progressed because they kept padding it out. They really didn't know where it was going. And I already had the trade, so I'm like, I don't need this book. So what happens? I go to a flea market. And I see this book sitting out there for 50 bucks. And it's used. And I look at it and it's in great condition. And I ask the guy, I'm like, hey, just for shits and giggles, I asked if he'd take 35. I always try to haggle a little bit. There's no harm in asking. Just don't come across like an ass and offer $5 for a $50 book. So I asked if he'd take 35. He said 45. And we met halfway at 40. So I ended up buying this book for 40 bucks. You know what that means? I got to buy volume two now. Next up is DCB Services Limited Edition Variant Hardcover Tokyo Ghost. Rick Remender and Sean Murphy. Man, I can't wait to dive into this. I haven't read anything past issue one. So really, really looking forward to this. Two of my favorite creators together. I cannot wait for this. There's also a standard cover to this, but I decided to go with the DCBS cover because I pre-ordered it that way. Finally, my last book for the haul is Jonathan Hickman's Avengers Omnibus Volume 1. Hopefully, they will announce a volume 2 soon, but man, this is some of the best Avengers. Not since the days of Kirk Music and George Perez have I enjoyed Avengers so much. I love Jonathan Hickman's run on Avengers. It is awesome. And, of course, it all leads up to Infinity, which is what's loosely the new Avengers Infinity War is based on. 
it is just pure superhero goodness at its best. Characters like Sunspot and Cannonball join the team. He takes a lot of the Bendis things that I didn't really like. And he makes me kind of like it. Like the Illuminati. It makes sense to have Illuminati in this book. It all leads up to Infinity. So this collects everything from Volume 1 and Volume 2 of the hardcovers of Avengers and Volume 1 of New Avengers and the Infinity hardcover. So pretty much Avengers 1 through 23 and New Avengers 1 through 12 and issues of Infinity 1 through 6. If you've never read this, I highly, highly recommend this book. Jonathan Hickman has an awesome way of storytelling. And if you're wondering, he himself layered the book out where none of the covers are in front of the issue to give any spoilers away, just like he does with all his other hardcovers. So even though he is no longer writing it Marvel Comics, he still has a lot of input in how his hardcovers are layered and put out. So, yeah, do yourself a favor and check it out. Buy the trade paperback. Get it at Comixology. Buy the omnibus. Whatever you do, read it. It's awesome. And last but not least, to join the Bai Shoujo shelf is Squirrel Girl. Her out first. She comes with a nice little stand with leaves. How cute. A little squirrel. And here she is. Squirrel Girl. Now the legs have pegs, so let's go ahead and put them on there. There's even a peg for the squirrel. So don't lose that squirrel because you'll have a six finger squirrel girl. There you go. This was my haul, but before I go, I want to give a quick and loud shout out to one of our subscribers, Miguel. Miguel, thank you so much for this physical copy of I Am Setsuna. I am so excited to play this dude. You have no idea. You went way above and beyond. I never would have expected this. Thank you so much. Seriously. I cannot wait to play this. I know this is the sort of spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger, but whatever. It is the physical copy because if you watch our digital versus physical, I refuse to buy digital. So thank you so much to, us, to our wonderful subscriber, Miguel. Much love, man. So that's it, guys. I would love to know what you guys bought, what you plan on buying what you plan on buying next month, whatever it is, whether it's toys or just video games or books. So yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time watching and like the video and watch our weekly show that comes out every Thursday where we discuss geeky topics like comic books, movies, video games, anime, and figures. Have a great day.